welcome to my channel, Fat to Keto. My friends call me Jelly. Yes, I lost 181 pounds on a ketogenic journey, and I still have more to go. Am I sick? Was I not going to post a video? Because I'm about to tell you in the next clip that this video will go on the next day's video. However, I decided to ramble way too long, over 15 minutes. So, this next clip will be showing up on Wednesday and today is Tuesday so uh, yeah it won't be going on with Thursday like I'm about to tell you it's going to go on I'm feeling way better than starving and um you'll see in a minute how my day was it's long and ranty and sorry and yeah hope everyone else is doing good I'm doing way better as the video goes on I'm doing way better um you'll see <sighs> yeah, didn't mean to talk so long, sorry. And if you don't want to hear me whining about my stupid stomach, uh, don't even watch the video because I'm being ridiculously whiny. So, welcome to my bed. Okay, you are going to see this video in the next day's video. Um, so, it is Tuesday night. So I didn't make a video today. I did get made up like six, seven hours ago to make a video. Um, but let me tell you about my day. Uh, 7 a.m. I woke up. I tried to go back to sleep. I couldn't, so I made me some bacon. Two hours later, I was still starving, so I made me one of those smoked port thingies. Plus, you know, I had a collagen coffee with my bacon. Um, an hour later, I kept having to run to the bathroom. Like, yeah, I got really stomach sick. Um, plus it's that time of the month. Surprise! I'm not supposed to have them. Like, since 2012, I have three to four a year max because um, I have an IUD. And I just got it replaced in October. And ever since just going carnivore, I am having them each month. And this one is a bad one. Like, I am passing out almost from the pain. It's like my IED fell out or something. It's weird. Like, I should not be having any of these symptoms. I'm not blaming carnivore, but it seems my hormones are changing drastically. Um, so, and then I got horrible heartburn, almost puking. I literally slept for five hours after that. Um, woke up, still not feeling great. I t oh, during all that, my blood pressure got to um, 210, I think it was, over 120. Yes, it was crazy. Um, my blood sugar went to 140. I hadn't eaten sugar, and it was not from the food. It just started climbing the sicker I got. Um, so something's going on in my body. I'm thinking it's magnesium because I'm not eating anything with magnesium in it. And I stopped taking the magnesium pill back in April because it was making me very ill. Um, so I think I'm having another issue with magnesium. A year ago I was in the emergency room because of my magnesium got dangerously low. And I'm worried it's happening again. I am having the heart palpitations. It can cause your blood pressure to be crazy high. It can cause your sugar to raise. It can cause cramping and I am having cramping that I haven't had in forever. I'm having leg cramps too. Um, and I'm really scared to take a stupid magnesium pill. Also, my stomach can't handle anything. I can't eat spinach or anything like that. So um, I need to find some raspberries. But I am going to insert a clip of some stuff I made. And each little container has over 200 milligrams of magnesium. I ate it. It was yummy, and then I got sick from it, and spent the last five hours in this bed sleeping on and off. Um, I have spent the whole day basically since 10 a.m., and it is after 10 o'clock at night now in this bed waking up back and forth being sick. I'm doing way better right now. I'm actually starving and having severe leg cramps. Um, and I can't go take my Motrin, and I'm pretty sure the leg cramp I'm having right now is from that time of the month, um, because I used to get severe cramps throughout my whole body when it would happen, and I'm, I'm having this, you know, you know if you're a woman, you know what I'm talking about. 
Um, and if you don't know, then you're lucky you've never experienced it because um, it's painful. So I usually take ibuprofen, but it can tear my stomach up taking it without food. I'm hungry, but I'm scared to eat because every time I eat anything, I get sick the last few days. I swear, I think it's the next CM. This is day five of taking that CM, and my heartburn and my stomach issue is a billion times worse that now I can't even eat bacon. This is why I stopped Nexium back in December, because I swore it was making me extremely ill. Um, I'm going to give it a few more days, then I'm going to call my doctor and see if I can get an answer. Also, all the blood work they did so far yesterday that's come back, um, which I don't even know what any of them are, like the ones I've never heard of, other than the white and red blood count. Um, everything else is 100% normal, so they can't find anything so far because I think there's some more tests to come. Um, they can't find anything so far that's in the bad, at least with my blood. So there's no answers there. Um, a year ago, I was making stuffed peppers. Everything I made was keto, but I was eating keto. Um, other than I did do carnivore for two months, lowered my magnesium, ended up in the ER, really sick, in a lot of trouble, and I think I've done it again. Like an idiot. But what am I supposed to do? I can't eat. I don't know what to do. Y'all give me suggestions. I, I can't eat the spinach. I can't eat avocados. I'm deadly allergic to them. When I eat um, dark chocolate, I puke it up for hours. Um... Like every food that has magnesium in it makes me sick. Other than raspberries, I am going to go look for some raspberries. But I'm not sure how many I have to eat for that. I mean, it's a lot because raspberries have carbs. So how high am I going to be going? Now, my mother does have a different, same brand, but a different magnesium pill. It's one that's not made in B-Wax. And I think it does not have MCT oil in it because mine has it. I'm starting to wonder if I'm having issues with MCT oil. I don't, you know drink the oil anymore. I stopped that almost a year ago because it was making me very ill. And then I went to powder. But maybe the powder is messing with me too. And come to find out, it's in a lot of my pills that I'm having issues with. Um, but hers, I don't think has it, and it doesn't have the beeswax. It's a tablet. Um, and they're only 200 milligrams, but 200 milligrams is better than zero. I think I could take two anyways, but I would start with one and see what happens. So I'm hoping tomorrow I can make a video and I don't make myself sick taking it. But I know I'm sick from not having magnesium also. So it's pretty hard when you're sick from not having a supplement. And the supplement, when you take it, it makes you sick. But you could die from not having magnesium. Like, this is true. You can look it up. Magnesium controls your heart, your muscles, your liver your blood sugars your high blood pressures like all of its control with magnesium and if you ain't got none and a couple weeks ago i was getting very very low on the test and if it shows on the test you're pretty much in trouble <sighs> and i've tried a lot of different things and so far i haven't found a product that i can take and not get sick from um i know y'all are sick of hearing all this and i'm sick of saying all this yeah, I want to be well. I want to be completely healed of all my diseases, all my stupid stomach issues. And I, I, I want to be like under 170. Okay, yeah, I want to be 140 or less or 148 or less. However, I'm going to be happy with the 170s. Okay, I'm going to be happy when I get in the 180s. I'm going to be happy when I can get off the 197 and stay below 197. And that's never going to happen as long as my body is under this kind of stress. Yes, my size is way smaller, but the scale isn't going to move when my body is fighting constantly, throwing up constantly, um, in severe, severe pain. I'm not getting sleep. Like, that's just not going to happen until I can heal my stupid gut health. No, I can't do um, apple cider vinegar. I can't do most things. I have reactions to everything. Look, the doctor thought Nexium would heal me. It's not working. Not giving up on it yet because I've only had it five days. But the last five days, especially the last four, 
has been H-E double hockey sticks, worse than ever, and every day gets worse than the day before, where I can't even have bacon now. Let me stop whining. Let me go ahead and show you the uh, food I made. And uh, yeah, it wasn't even food. Well, I'll show you the picture of my breakfast, and then I'll show you uh, the little concoction that I made to get to magnesium. And I actually like the taste. I'm pretty disappointed how much it hurt my stomach. And I think it's just because my stomach cannot process foods right now, and that's why it was so painful. Like, I felt my intestines turning. Yes, I have IBSD, but I cured it doing keto, and now it's messed up again. My intestines move when I put food in it and it becomes extremely painful and then it wouldn't digest and then I was almost throwing it back up okay some of y'all said to check out I think it's SICB I don't know it's it basically it means small intestine bacterial infection is where the bad bad bacterial gets into your small intestine so I'm gonna have to ask the gastro doctor if I can do the breath test to see if I have that issue because it's a lot of these symptoms. Also, this is the hard part, people. Also, I've had these crazy kind of symptoms for years now, like since 2012. And in 2012, I went on metformin. I started taking Netsium and I got my first IUD. I stopped the metformin um, thinking it was that. And it's been a long time. And it's not that. I stopped the Netsium. My heartburn did heal a whole lot, but it was still really bad and made it where I couldn't eat vegetables at all. So the doctor's convinced if I get used to net Netsium again, I can eat vegetables again. So we'll see. I'm having severe heart palpitations right now, too. Um, and then I have the IAD. And come to find out, common side effects is nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea rare side effects is a whole crap other stuff that I also have. Is it the IUD? I don't know. I don't want to blame something, but the answer is I don't know and no doctor knows. I am being sent from one doctor to the next and no one knows because the stomach doctor doesn't deal with the heart condition and the heart condition doesn't deal with the stomach doctor and the diabetes doctor doesn't deal with any of it. And guess what? I think they're all tied to one, one thing. I think it's all together and um, I need a doctor that handles everything and I don't have a doctor that handles everything and uh, yeah, I'm told I have to go to specialists that are separate from each other and they don't talk to each other. They're not even in the same little thingy like circle. Um, mm -mm -mm. I want to eat the broccolis again, people. I want to eat my spinach salads. I want cauliflower. I've been craving steak. Like, there's steak in there. That's my dad's. Um, and I could go eat one. But it's going to make me sick, so I don't do it. But last night, I wanted to go in there and eat it raw. I know, it sounds crazy. But when my I always know when my red blood cells are low, and they are low right now. I've had two tests to prove it. Um, because I start craving raw steak. And usually... I would go heat it up, heat the outside, and eat it. It would 99% be raw, and that's how I've eaten my steak my whole life, and it's how I keep my red blood cells out um, because I have conditions. Uh, but uh, I can't do that because it makes me throw up now. And if I cook it all the way, it makes me throw up now. I can't handle red meat all of a sudden. Come to find out, okay, one of those tests was to see if I was allergic to red meat, and I'm pretty sure it was one of the ones that came back saying, because all my tests came back fine so far, and I pretty sure it was the AGI or IGA one. Um, I'm not sure. I have to go look. Um, where it said I wasn't allergic to red meat. So they were making sure I didn't get bit by a tick or something that, you know, there's that disease. Certain ticks can give you that make you allergic to red meat. But my stomach can't process it. Yes, I've had stomach issues my whole life, just never this bad. And I was watching Dr. Barry, and he literally said that um, after um, being on carnivore, 
a lot of stuff gives histamine reactions and doesn't settle on his stomach and other people's stomach any longer because they went carnivore. But this was happening to me before I went carnivore. I went carnivore because of it. Now I just got to figure out how to fix it. So I'm going to shut up, wash the makeup off because I fell asleep all day with it on. Um, and go back to sleep because I'm hungry but scared to eat. I shouldn't be scared of food. I mean, who would have thought someone 368 pounds uh, would get into the 190s and become scared of food? I'm not scared of getting fat again at all because, you know, we know I ate some bad food when this all started and you couldn't get meat or eggs. Um, I'm scared of the throwing up. That's what I'm scared of. And I would be honest, if um, I could eat the rice cakes and not be sick, I would eat them, but they make me very ill. I did discover that I cannot eat anything with rice in it, any oatmeal stuff. Like, I discovered all this when we ran out of keto foods. So, it is not just the keto vegetables. It is not just fat foods. It is low calories foods it is what people tell you to eat like i couldn't do the brat diet because that's what the doctors normally tell you to eat when you're having a bad stomach issue no i'm allergic to bananas i can't process rice i throw it right back up um me and gluten are not friends at all so no toast and um hello apples they have never ever settled on my stomach they have always given me the worst heartburn in the world I can tell you foods that usually I can eat and I don't know because I haven't tried because I do keto and that would be grapes, um, blackberries and raspberries if I could find them, which are keto. Um, those are foods I've never once in my life had issues with. I could just eat them all day long, um, but the grapes make my blood sugar go up, of course, because they're loaded with carbs. I was supposed to only talk a few minutes. That's why this was going to be another day and not today. So... Let me show you, because I said I was going to show you. I'm going to show you what I made. And shut up. And probably go ahead and post this after all. Okay, so we are about to make this. I had it in the fridge for about an hour. Um, you can see some ca cacao nips in there right there. We're not going to put those in this one that I'm doing now. Um, only put a few. You can put them in if you want. What I am making is, I'm calling them magnesium bowls. Okay, technically they're called keto oatmeal. Some people call them keto oatmeal. I've done my own recipes. I'm going to show you how I did it. Um, but each one of these cups has... 200 magnesium now when you put the cacao powder and cacao nips and stuff in it it actually will raise the magnesium um a lot but i don't feel like doing a chocolate one um right now and making sure it tastes correctly so the hemp hearts that we are sticking in there that's going to be the first thing we do let me see if i can pull this up to me get a little better Okay, so this is what I'm using. The organic hemp heart shelled hemp seeds. So we are going to take three tablespoons of it. I'm going to show you the back of the bag so you can see the um, macros and know I'm not lying about it. So we just put three in there. Now you can do this many ways with many different ingredients. So... One carb, one fiber. So if you're doing total carbs, it's one for three tablespoons. I am doing net because it's so low, so it's zero in my opinion. Okay, so chia seeds. I do organic everything. It's a little expensive, but it's what I like. So if you're doing total carbs, that means this dish is six carbs. So far, once we put these in, um, more like seven, because I'm going to put two tablespoons of this one. If you're doing nut, it's two and zero. So it's two. So, 
There we go. Now, in this one and this one, I use my Sweet and Low because that's what I like. I put one pack of Sweet and Low in it. However, I am going to try this monk fruit one. Um, it kind of tastes like brown sugar, and I want to see if I will like the taste of this one because um, so it's I'll show you the back. Total carbs, total sugar, alcohol. It's not supposed to raise your blood sugar. And it's not a chemical. So I want to see if I can handle this one. Actually, that's probably way too much. I don't know. But we're going to go for it. We're just going to... Yeah, that looks good. We'll see tomorrow because I want them to sit overnight in the fridge. I am going to sprinkle in cinnamon. No, I did not measure cinnamon. Um, when I made this one, I put... A little bit of cinnamon, and then I came back when I went to eat it and sprinkled a lot more in there. Okay. So, and what I mean, you can do it all different ways. If I could have almond milk or I could have heavy whipped cre heavy cream, I would be putting um, a half a cup of either one of them in here. I cannot, so we are using water. Also, butter would be amazing in here. Um... But I'm being lazy. I'm just doing it this way. Um, I have all different kind of things I'm going to try. Like the cacao nip. The uh, cacao powders. I'm going to make it more like an oatmeal gooey for one. Um, but right now, this is what we're doing. So this is a quarter cup of water. I'm going to go ahead and put it in each one. And then I don't do a whole half a cup in each one. I do... Like, yeah, a quarter and a, what is it, two-thirds or something? I don't know. So, then I just stir it. It's going to be very, very watery and make a big mess because, you know, I make messes. I meant to stir in the cinnamon and stuff first. It just mixes better if you do it with just no liquid and then stir again. And then you sit in the fridge. It needs at least 20 minutes to get the chia seeds to bloom and gel out. Um, but I'm going to use these for tomorrow. So if I can handle this with my stomach, not only is it, it could be a meal for breakfast for me. Um, but it will give me 200 milligrams a day of magnesium, which I have no magnesium in my diet. And the pills are making me sick. Also... I am thinking about making oatmeal gooey type stuff to add 200 more in my diet each day. So I'm hoping I can handle these because I could get all my magnesium I need from these bad boys. Like two of these a day is all I need. And it would still stay under my carb count. So we'll see. You know, I have so many problems. But um, I'm about to eat this very slowly and see what happens. See if my tummy can digest it. Like I said, there is cacao nips in this one. Um, but I realized I didn't need it since I'm doing cinnamon. I didn't like the cinnamon and chocolate mixed together. But it's still way better than I thought it was going to taste. I thought it was going to be really gross. Oh, you know what I did forget to stick in there? I forgot my sea salt. Not sea salt, but Himalayan salt. So yeah, I had a really rough day and we're going to talk about it in just a second.